I was really interested in that issue of people mistreating themselves because we are privy to our own weaknesses and faults. We know them better than anyone else knows them. And so it's very easy for us to determine that we're not worthwhile because of all the ways that we don't live up to what we should live up to and the painful knowledge we have of that and to not regard ourselves as worthwhile and to not treat ourselves properly. And that's not good. The most valuable thing you possess by any stretch of the imagination is your reputation. And your reputation basically, I wouldn't call it a status marker exactly, it's a productive generosity and competence marker. If you have a good reputation, then people can trust you and they can trust you to engage in reciprocal productive interactions with them. They can trust you to take their interests into account as well as your own and to play stable, voluntary, desirable, medium to long-term games. Nothing is more valuable than your reputation. You have to treat yourself as if you're valuable. And then that is the same attitude that you extend to other people. Well, and it's because you are valuable and, you, and, and that it's a necessity to adopt the responsibility that goes along with recognizing that. So even if you're not happy with who you are and even if you have your reasons, you still deserve presumption of innocence. You still deserve to have a good defense mounted on your own behalf. You still need to treat yourself as if you're someone valuable and, and, and someone worthy of love, even though you have all reasons to know why you fall short. Every relationship that you have in your life or that you've ever had in your life with every single person is a reflection of the relationship that you are having with yourself. People come into our life, into our experience to show us, to demonstrate, to reflect and mirror back to us the places and pieces and parts of ourselves that we cannot see, are unwilling to see, that we deny or dismiss or ignore. Every relationship in your life is a reflection of the relationship that you're having with yourself. Now, our worth and our belonging are not negotiated with other people. We carry those inside of our hearts. I know who I am. I'm clear about that. And I'm not going to negotiate that with you. Then I may fit in for you, but I no longer belong to myself. We carry those inside of our hearts. And so for me, I know who I am. I'm clear about that. I will negotiate maybe even a topic with you, yeah. but I'm not gonna negotiate who I am with you. Because then, and this is I think the heart of the book, then I may fit in for you, but I no longer belong to myself. And that is a betrayal I am not willing to do anymore. I spent the first 30 years of my life doing that. I'm not willing to betray myself anymore, to fit in with you. Our value on how someone is treating us, how successful we are, how perfect of a life we've lived. The problem is all of those things can change. If you're getting your value out of how people treat you, then if they hurt you, they disappoint you, you're going to feel devalued. If you're basing your value off of your achievements, how much you make, what you drive, the title behind your name, then if something happens and you don't have that position, your business goes down, then your value will go down. And some people don't feel good about themselves because they've made mistakes in life. They're not where they thought they would be. Now they're living insecure, feeling inferior. They're basing their value on their performance. Your value should be based solely on the fact that you are a child of the Most High God. What they say or do doesn't lessen who you are. Mistakes you've made doesn't decrease your value. That's what you did. That's not who you are. Value is not based on what you do, what you make, who you know. That's superficial. Those things can change. Your value comes from your creator. You owe it to yourself to be great. You owe it to yourself. Some say they're selfish. Some might say they owe it to their family to be there for them. Let me tell you something. You owe it to your family to set an example. An example of someone who lives the life they want to live. A strong example of a strong human being. You owe it to everyone you love to set an example of what a great life looks like. So they can follow in your footsteps. Settling for less 
it stops with you. Except an average, it stops with you. Strength, courage, determination, and a beautiful life, that starts with you. Appreciate yourself. No matter where you are today, you got you there. The good and the not so good. No matter who you are today, you've been with you through it all. Appreciate who you are. And finally, honor yourself. Honor your feelings, honor your thoughts, honor your gifts, honor your strengths, honor your weaknesses. Work on those things that need to be worked on. Give yourself permission to explore, to stand up, to fall down, to not be perfect all the time. Honor who you are, where you are, what you do, how you do it, and commit yourself to be better. So we've got the vault, then we go to I, integrity, which is choosing courage over comfort, practicing your values. It's choosing what's right over what's fun, fast, and easy. When something happens, I assume positive intent. And so I think for braving the wilderness, the whole idea of the wilderness being those times when we stand alone, and those times when we go out on a limb, the times we walk away from what we know, our ideological bunkers and our beliefs, braving is the tool to help us manage the wilderness. I'll leave you with this. There will be times when standing alone feels too hard, too scary, and we'll doubt our ability to make our way through the uncertainty. Someone somewhere will say, don't do it. You don't have what it takes to survive the wilderness. This is when you reach deep into your wild heart and remind yourself, I am the wilderness. You indeed are the product of all the choices that you've made up until this moment. Circumstances do not make a man, they reveal him. Which means that in order to rid yourself or get past the negativity and the doubt and the judgment and the kinds of emotional reactions that get in your way, you have to put responsibility first and foremost on yourself. You have to rid yourself of the inclination to blame other people for what is wrong with you, to blame your circumstances, to look backwards in your life, and look at your uh, family and come up with all kinds of uh, real nice explanations, but they really don't uh, help you to uh, get past these kinds of emotional reactions. This is your mind, your consciousness, your soul, or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter what you label it. It's just understanding that, uh, that how you process and, and perceive yourself is determined not by what other people tell you as much as you'd like to believe that, but in fact by how you have chosen to process yourself. Feel good about yourself. Treat yourself, cherish yourself as a, as a valuable, important, significant, grand, divine creature, as someone who is unique and special in all the world feel that way about yourself wherever you go and carry yourself that way. Your biggest strength in life will be the perception that you have over yourself. How do you feel about yourself, your self-worth? So where do you see yourself? That's the greatest thing. So confidence is the greatest asset you can ever have. They will be inspired by you. They will follow your example. Some say to focus on yourself is selfish. I say, to settle for a mediocre life that you hate, that's selfish. I am more than this. You owe it to yourself to see how far you can go in life. You owe it to yourself to earn the kind of money you want to earn. You owe it to yourself to be the kind of person you want to be, to feel the energy you want to feel, to have the body you want to have from doing the work you know you are capable of doing. You owe it to yourself to feel the pride of knowing you made your life. You didn't get lucky. You worked for it. You sacrificed. When it was hard, you pushed harder. You owe it to yourself to feel that pride. 